Hey guys. guys. Welcome back to another episode of From Blended to Besties. We're on episode 10. Yes. We're almost finishing up the season. Yes. I can't believe it. It's flown by. I know. I'm excited. We're much more prepared now than we were in the beginning. Yes. So. We got the microphones set up. I know not to be so far away from the microphone. Don't be afraid <laughs> of the microphone. Embrace the... Yeah, I think it just like reminds me of a penis and I think that's why it's just like... So you're afraid of it? Is that kind of. It's a, it's a big one. <laughs> I'm not used to someone with a big penis. I know. I can't with you. I like, I guess we have to get used to the fact that the closer we are to the mic, you can hear us clearly. And as soon as we just like, walk away, just even a little bit, mm-hmm. um, it messes up. So um, I have a really good habit of talking loud enough that y'all can hear me if I move or not. No, so. she sounded really good on the last podcast. So um, we last left you where we were going to go kayaking on a family kayaking trip. We did. We talked um, about that on the podcast? Yeah. Man, I already forgot. I love that for you. I know. Um, no, there you go. Take a drink. <laughs> we're talking about uh, just taking a whole day where we like walk around with like a salsa or something in our hand. And every single time we say, I love that for you, taking a sip, we black out by three o'clock. Probably. Can you imagine going back to the podcast and every single video we've ever done on social media and see how many times we say, I love that for you? I don't even want to think about it. It's very embarrassing. Someone who's super loyal and has time on their hands and try that out. <laughs> Let us know. You'll win a prize. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so we did go kayaking. It was actually a really good time. Yes. Um, we went kayaking. Well, we kind of went canoeing. So we bought a canoe at our house and it holds three people. So in the canoe, it was Tiffany, Bryce, and I. Mm-hmm. Tiffany was in charge of the motor. You did a great job. Yeah. Look at me having to drive even when we're on the waters. Mm-hmm. Yep. I topped right into that front seat. Yep. Megan did a great job of eating snacks. Hey. I also in the front it. of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you don't even get me started. When we were coming back, so the waves, it was a lot a lot windier when we were coming back to land or back to our car to land. <laughs> to <laughs> our cars. The wind, girl, you saw those waves coming right at me. What did you want me to do? Go away she from them? She was diving like right into the waves. Was getting my chips all wet. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you care about is your chips. <laughs> there was salt in my Bud Light. That's what I'm saying. There was salt everywhere, and I, I couldn't avoid the waves. Okay, we were going against the current first of yes, all. Yes, we were. And I knew if we went against the current the wrong way, we would tip over. So I have to go head on. Um, it and and, and can, keep in mind, this is the first time I've ever driven like a canoe a motorized canoe so learning this is not like when you steer a car where you like turn the wheel left or right like you have to turn it like if you want to go forward first of all you have to like shift the gear like backwards in order to go forwards and then you have to like turn the whole entire like lever thingy like behind me where the way it was set up in order to go left and forward to go right and then just sometimes if we weren't going left enough (laughs) I have to like arch my back but also I'm sitting on the canoe so if I tilt my body way the wrong way we gonna flip over there was just a lot of mechanisms that I had to figure out Mm -hmm. so it was a good time though we got over there um the husbands each had their own kayaks. Michael got to, you know, go on his own kayak that we just got him. And we were we were there all day. Yeah. All day. We brought snacks. Um, the first, the one side of the island we were at, because we went to our, like, this random little island in the middle of, I don't know, the ocean. Yeah. Um, it was windy. I mean, so windy. We were freezing. And then you walk through the trees. And on the other side of the it beach, was amazing. it was like. It was night and day. Night and day. Like, no wind at all. Um, we recorded it, so it will be on YouTube. It's a vlog mm-hmm. of us going um, – I was going to say campy um, – going fishing and out on the water. Um, you can actually see in the video we're recording us walking from the windy side to the not windy side, so you can just see the difference because mm-hmm. uh, the kids were miserable on the windy side. Yeah. Bryce was literally Bryce was sitting crying. down pouting. Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany caught crabs. <laughs> I caught one crab, <laughs> and I didn't even catch it because by the time the line got closer to me, I panicked. <laughs> I know she did. She's like, ah! <laughs> Because no one, first of all, none of y'all prepared me that I could potentially be fishing and catch a crab. Yeah, they live in the ocean, under the sea. I get that. But I'm here, like, trying to see which fish I might have caught. And I'm like, why isn't it, like, you know, flippering and floundering? And I was like, that's a whole ass crab. I was like, hell no. And then this coming full speed at me. Mm-mm. Yep. But right I did. I caught a crab. Yep, Travis caught a catfish. I caught something, but I didn't hook it. I got way too excited. And I don't know if you saw, but... I pulled back and I still had my whole shrimp on my line and the fish like went 
and like plop really? back in the water. Yeah, I was uh, very upset. Right. But it was yeah. probably just a catfish also, which we wouldn't have kept. But yeah, we didn't get really anything. But mm-hmm. it was still it was a good time. It was a fun time. All six of us were out there. Mm-hmm. We had a great time. Yeah, definitely have to go again. Um, what else? We were we're both a little, especially me, a little under the weather. So if my voice sounds even worse than normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both of us is the same thing too. It's with the coughing and clearing our throat. Because Mike mm-hmm. yesterday was like, "How many times are you going to clear your throat?" And I'm hearing you do it today, and I'm like, "Damn, is that how bad I sound?" Yeah, I've had it since like last. I think it was like last Thursday is when I said that I had a sore throat, but I thought it was just from like sleeping with my mouth open. But then Saturday it was like really bad, and then it felt fine on Sunday. And but then the Sunday night I was like, I texted her and was like, "Girl, <laughs> listen." I'm not coming over. <laughs> I'm not coming over on Monday. <laughs> but I feel. I feel fine, better. So I just sound, I sound a lot worse than I actually feel. So Mm -hmm. Uh, we have Seltzer Land this weekend. Oh my God, yes. Trying to think of, oh, this is going up today. (laughs) I forgot. So if we do say it today, yes, we are going to uh, Seltzer Land in Tampa on Saturday. If you guys are going, let us know. We'd love to meet you and say hi. Yes. We're going to be there, I believe, at 1220 to 250 is our time slot um because they yes. go by time slots so let us know send us a dm on instagram or facebook um and we would love to say hi to you guys yes and if you see us out grab us and say hi yes don't be afraid don't be a stranger <laughs> megan bites only a little bit i know you'll be fine though you'll heal <laughs> you'll be fine though. um <laughs> anyway so today's topic we're going to be talking about um is going to be like you know there's a bunch of different mom personalities like which mom are you do you know yes. what i mean what brought this up was, you know, it's Bryce's birthday. Um, his birthday is April 5th. He is, it's coming up. And, you know, as we've said a million times before, like, I don't have a lot of mom friends that have kids, especially his age. So, like, I'm not going to have a bunch of kids at the party. Actually, yeah. right now, it doesn't look like we're going to have any. The only other child is going to be Michael. Yeah. I don't. It's I don't, all adults. I know. I, I don't know anybody with kids. So, I'm like, okay, well. Now it comes to, you know, inviting, are you, are you that mom is going to be the name of this podcast. Oh, sorry. That is so much better. I know. I don't know why we were having issues with it. I told you I couldn't hear myself out of both ears and you're like, that's not Sorry, I just fixed up the headphones. <laughs> Disregard. <laughs> okay. Literally the worst. <laughs> um, so are you that mom? Are you that mom that goes and invites the whole class to the party? And are you that mom who actually goes when you get the party invite? Which mom do you think I am? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> uh, I can tell you what mom I am. Um, I have never gone to a classroom party. Uh, yeah, I just have not. I just, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's because my anxiety or I just, I think about like my own issues. Like, for example, I was telling Tiffany, you know, there's a couple kids in Bryce's class that he doesn't really get along with. Like, he tells me all the time, like, so-and-so was mean to me. So-and-so, mm-hmm. you know, takes the ball from me. And with his school, you have to invite the whole class. And so it's like if I were to send those invites. You have to invite those kids. Too. And what if those kids come to his birthday? You know what I mean? And then how do you tell someone, like, oh, hey, my kid doesn't really get along with your kid. I actually didn't want you to go kind of thing. And I, I don't know. It's just a really weird. I'm trying to compare it, like, my childhood to my like adult life like I know I went because I obviously was invited to classroom parties and I always went and I vice versa I invited my classmates or my mom invited my classmates I honestly can't remember if the kids that I didn't like went with us or like well like actually showed up I feel like they did so there was one girl and I know this sounds petty don't come for me I know let me hear it there was a girl named Tiffany in my class I remember remember you talking about her (laughs) and I hate when people have the same name as me and they're in the same room with me. I know that's the dumbest thing ever. It's just always been a thing since I was a kid because, you know, they would say like Tiffany and we'd both turn around. They'd have to pick and choose. So it's stemming from my childhood. It's like a mini childhood trauma. I love that for you. I hated it. Um, I'm pretty sure she was at the parties too. And I knew I didn't like her, but she was there because oh my God. I did a Bratz theme party one year. My mom customized it so everyone could have a name. And I'm pretty sure there was two Tiffany shirts. And I was just like, if she doesn't show up, I'm getting both shirts. <laughs> Damn. So you had – it was your birthday. Yeah. Tiff, it was Tiffany's birthday, and you had another Tiffany there. Yeah. I didn't have a choice. I had to invite so everyone. everyone's like, hey, Tiffany, how are you? And you're turning around like, great. But they're not talking to you. They're talking to other Tiffany. I would have been upset. I mean, I am pretty sure I was not nice because of that. 
Um, I don't think I really even talked to her. I think I was so like upset about the name, but I also think she had issues with me, but we were kids. It was like grade school. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like we, I think everyone showed up, like whether it was kids that you didn't like or whatnot showed up to the party. Um, I think it's a lot more different when it's like you're growing up with the set of kids Mm -hmm. versus with like Bryce's first year in school. So it's not like he grew up with these kids where like Mm -hmm. you already have this established thing that they're all friends. Um, But like as an adult now, I think Michael's had like two invitations in his backpack before and I saw it and I was like, I looked the other way. I know. (laughs) And I've done that with Michael too. And it's just like the only party. Did we go to Gabriel's party? Nope. <laughs> no, we were supposed to go. I remember we were supposed to go to um, an old friend of mine's son's birthday party. And I remember Bryce was a baby because mm-hmm. Michael's in kindergarten. They were in kindergarten together. Um, and I couldn't find my keys. And that was my excuse to like, be like, yeah, such an going. excuse. It's true, though. You lose your keys all the time, though. I did. That back in the day, I did. Uh, my keys are you know, always in the same spot now. But yeah, I didn't go. Yeah, I can't. It's not that, like, I don't want Michael to go. I think it would be a great opportunity for him. But sometimes, like, I don't know, like, being an adult, it's, like, such an inconvenient time when the party is happening and I have so much stuff to do and it's, like, usually a lot further and I'm, like, I don't Mm want to have to drive over there. And then, like, this day and age, like, I can't. You you don't know the other moms either. I can't imagine dropping, like, Michael off somewhere else and just, like, walking away because I feel like we always have to like watch the kids to make sure they're behaving and doing stuff right. So like we don't have the kids that are acting inappropriate, inappropriate. Um, but then I also don't want to be there the whole entire time. Do people drop their kids off at birthday parties and stuff? Oh yeah, really? I didn't mean to yell the microphone. Yes, I've definitely heard complaints of not only people dropping off their kids at birthday parties and leaving, but dropping off the siblings as well. See that that's another issue that I would have with like if I was throwing a birthday party for Bryce and people just came and dropped their kids off, and then I was responsible. Then it's like I can't even enjoy my son's birthday party with him because I'm having to like watch other You're people's kids. You're responsible, yeah. Exactly. That's a no for me. That's another reason why I'm not inviting the people. <laughs> Yeah, like I wouldn't mind siblings coming if they gave you ahead of time and maybe you knew the kids. And, and I think that's the biggest thing for me is like actually knowing the kids. Because yeah. one, if I'm going to have a bunch of kids at the house, like I want to be able to be like, hey, no, you can't do that. You can't have that. Like I don't know about that and not feel like I'm going to get in trouble for like kindly scolding someone else's kid. Mm-hmm. But um, I also don't want, you know, a bratty kid coming over and like just destroying the place or, you know, possibly – eating, drinking soda, you know, something they're not supposed to be yeah. having because they're not listening to me when I'm telling them no, that that's probably not okay. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I do feel bad because, again, like I said, we're, we're planning this birthday party and I was going to be like, uh, no kids there. But at the same time, you know, I, I hear the tea every single day when Bryce gets home from the school. Oh, so-and-so got talked to again. Oh, you know, blah, 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 got in trouble because he was hitting another kid or he wasn't listening. And I was like, mm-hmm. if you're not listening at my son's birthday party because your parent's not there. I mean, I don't know how these parents discipline their kids. Like, me personally, I mean, I don't know what's going on at home, but if you're having a bunch of issues in school, my I know my kids, you know, they get in trouble and then, you know, they they know to act right in school. Yeah. So like what's going on at home and are you going to be disciplining your kids to make sure that there's not chaos going on? I don't know. So which mom are you? Do you go to the birthday parties if you're invited, which you said you, you would? Would you go to another if you got invited? It depends. Like, if it's someone that I know, I know the parents and I know the kids, yes, 100%, because I'd feel like it's just a great, like, social activity to do. But I feel like if it's a stranger, I mean, it, it has to be, like, I think, like, for Michael's case, I would probably be like, is this someone that you're really close to and you, like, mm-hmm. really want to go and we can do this? But if this just is a classmate that you say hi and bye every now and then – um, and it's, like, in BFE somewhere else, maybe not. If it's, like, five minutes away, yeah, you could stop by for a few hours and, like, live your best life. Um, but I think it just – it varies. But I'm really yeah. not one to – I don't feel comfortable going into a stranger's house and just yeah. staying there. I, I feel don't like, think it would – I would go if it was at somebody's house. If it was at, like, a, a Chuck E. Cheese or, like, where Darren had her son's mm-hmm. birthday. Um, Maybe I would – I mean, I say maybe I would, but I haven't gone to any. Um. I've gone to adult birthday parties or, like, adult celebrations where the hosts, like, don't introduce you to anyone. So yeah. it's so awkward for me and as an adult being around adults to be in a situation where the host is going to be just having so many responsibilities and not introducing me to anyone. Like, I'm really just going to be, like, mm-hmm. a duck out of water. Yeah, like – Or fish out of water. At his, fish out of water. <laughs> 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 so 
Sorry, guys. At his school, like, you know, they're still, they're still, like, doing their whole COVID protocol thing. So it's not like they've had, like, um, remember Bryce, or not Bryce's school, Michael's school, we would all do, like, shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. And all the parents would get together and they would do, like, classroom parties and stuff. Like, there hasn't been any of that. Like, the only interactions the parents have had with each other is the in car line, line to mm -hmm. drop your kids off and then you leave. Like, I haven't spoken to another parent. And even if I wanted to, like, there's no time. Yeah. So if I'm going to go to a birthday party, like, I don't even know what half these parents look like. Like, how am I going to know? Exactly. You know, if they're at a Chuck E. Cheese somewhere, which table? You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Like, and again, I feel bad because, you know, I'm sure it's it's great. And, but, I don't know. Yeah. And I just like to be comfortable knowing the parents, um, especially this day and age with, like, kids having allergies and kids not being able to eat mm -hmm. anything. I would hate to, like, throw, especially with me, like, I'm not going to have just pizza for a party. Like, we're going to have, like, a variety of food. And, and bananas. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to be like, oh, my child can't eat meat or something. And yeah. like, I didn't know because you, were you weren't you were there. Like, you didn't say anything and I don't really know you. And it's just like, I like an established friendship. Mm -hmm. Um, But I guess that's on my part because I don't make friends to begin with. Same. And then on the flip side, you know, you invite all these people and, like, no one goes. Or, like, one kid goes and then, okay. like, he knows that no one came to your party and then it's like, damn, this is embarrassing. One, I'd be mad that I spent money for a party that no one went to. And, yeah, yeah. secondly, I'd be pretty upset if we host this whole party, you know, get the kids' hopes up and they're super excited and it doesn't happen because – I'm such an emotional person that I'd probably be crying alongside them. <laughs> I know. And I would just feel like, I'm really putting myself out there and nobody can. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, these people probably feel the same that, you know, they're giving me a birthday card or whatever to go to their yeah. son's party and I didn't go. And I don't know. I just, I just keep thinking about, like, when we get there, like, what? The kids are going to go off and play and it's going to mm -hmm. be me. My husband works. At least, at least if I had my husband, like, I could hang out with Travis. But, yeah. like, I'm thinking I'm just going to start dragging you. Like, hey, we do it next Saturday, girl. <laughs> Let's go to Billy Bob's birthday party. <laughs> Bring game in the car before we go. That's even better when you have to introduce me. Be like, this is my ex-husband's wife. And they're just going to look at you like, what? <laughs> She's my best friend. I couldn't come alone. She's my emotional support person. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so next to kind of like veer off like playground moms. Kind of like the same thing. Like, are you talking to the other moms at the playground? If they're talking to you... I am more so sorry for any, like, playground moms who do see me in the playground and talk, like, try to talk to me. I don't want to say that I come off as rude, but I feel like because we're younger, that there's that stigma that, like, young moms don't, like, pay attention to their kids or anything. So mm -hmm. I try, like, extra hard to watch the kids and mm -hmm. not, like, talk to anyone or be on my phone if I don't have to be. Um, and especially when I take Bryce to the playground, like, you have to also play with him. Yeah. He requires he, that. Yes. So, I feel like some moms have tried doing small talk or being like, he's cute. Or I know one time he was playing with a little girl and the, it was a grandpa. He's like, how old is he? And I was like, oh, he's four. And he's like, he's four too. I was like, okay, good. And I went to the other side of the playground. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's not just being rude. It's just like, I'm trying to follow Bryce and see what he's doing. And I just, I don't know, I'm very shy in person and especially yeah. with someone that I don't know and I'm also not trusting when it comes to the kids because I'm always so scared that someone's gonna like talk to me to like distract me so they yeah. can take the kids and whether that's paranoid or not I'm a paranoid person no it's true like that actually does happen um all the time all you need to do is offer Bryce a snack and that kid's <laughs> gonna be like hauling ass the oh, other yeah. way so sure. I just don't want to talk to anyone i could do small talk like hi bye type of thing but i don't want to sit there and have a conversation if i am supposed to be watching the kids especially if i'm by myself um i just i need to like focus because i would feel horrible if something happens and feel so guilty if it's something like it's me and mike or me and you where we can like tag team in a way then mm -hmm. i wouldn't mind sitting down having a conversation or joking around and just like living our best lives do you remember when uh michael had his testing in the morning when he was at his old school and me and used to go to the park in the morning while he was testing because he only had to be at school for like a couple hours mm -hmm. right we went to the playground we used to take bryce to the playground because before bryce was in school and there was that mom who tiffany and i were on live we were on tiktok live like early in the morning mm -hmm. and the mom turned around and she was like what are you guys doing <laughs> it was just us so yeah, like it was literally just us and her at the playground because we went there at like eight o'clock in the morning yeah and uh, she's like what are you doing Oh, yeah. And we're like, we're on, we're on live. I think she's she like, what kind of live? <laughs> like, it's like a mom group. She's like, mom's in South Tampa. She's like, mom's in South Tampa. And I'm like, no. Nope. <laughs> she's like, I have a friend that's in that group. And I'm like, it's not us. <laughs> and she was just like very, 
interested um but and not in like a kind way it was like more like a condescending kind of way mm-hmm. yeah i think she was not happy that we were on live yeah, yeah she probably thought it was weird um and we were taking turns so it was one of us on live and i think you went off to put uh bryce on the swing yeah. so she's trying to catch your attention because i'm straight up ignoring her mm-hmm. and then i'm like we're not like we don't have enough people to talk via live and swing bryce because he demanded to be swinging yeah we like t- we weren't just like ignoring bryce bryce was we were tag teaming in and out but yeah <laughs> but like that's how we do it so it's like it's either we were on live at that time or just mm-hmm. like talking to someone but just doing that type of thing and that pl- playground was also gated so that's yes. i mean that i would be more willing to talk to people the playground that i took to bryce by myself wasn't gated at all it was like an open playground uh-huh. so you could easily go there's not one way in one way out um that's the type of ones where i just try to and focus. we were literally the only one there yeah like it was bryce and then it was like one other little girl mm-hmm. so we didn't have to worry about like him getting lost in the the crowd of kids or whatever yeah um, I would like to – I think the the playground's a, a great spot to meet other moms. But, again, I just – my whole thing is if I run into someone like you and it's like she doesn't want to talk to me, but I'm trying to be nice and be like, hey, and you're like, hey, he's four. And then you, like, run to the side of the playground and I'm like, <laughs> okay, fuck me then. Like, I- that's my biggest fear over at the playground or people just – yeah, not wanting to talk to me. I think I would prefer to do maybe like a, a set up a play date type of thing where like everyone plans to, which I know you have to like actually meet people. Yes, in order to set this that is up, how though. you meet people. No, maybe like if I did meet someone at the playground, you know, be a little bit short, but be like, do you come here often? And be like, maybe Girl. we could set up a time. So you come here often? <laughs> <laughs> like set up a time where if I know that we're going to be there and she wants to talk more, like then I know it's going to be like, hey, can we like take turns on watching the kids and we can talk and converse? Like mm-hmm. I need a teammate who's also going to be like, taking the same time, like, looking at the kids every now and then. If I see someone doing that, I'd be more likely to talk to them because I know they'd be aware. But then you also see that there's parents out there who, like, don't look up at all as soon yeah, as they drop their, their phone, kids off. Their, like, I cannot stand that. The moms who take their kids to the playground and they literally just are just on their phone the entire time. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being on your phone. But, you oh, know, yeah, we're on our phones, time. too. Yeah, but we're not just literally just letting our kids run wild, doing whatever they want, like, just staring down at our phones, like... I do get up and I go play with the kids on the playground and sometimes I want to sit and then sometimes, you know, I'm yelling at them from my seat and yeah. then sometimes, you know what I mean? Like making sure that they're behaving and being nice and not going up the slide the wrong yeah. way and all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I like, cannot stand that. In, uh, in St. Pete when we took the boys, we were sitting down, we were drinking, what were we drinking? Like pina colada drinks or something and because yeah, it was like really colada. hot. It was one of the first hot days in Florida. Um, we were taking turns and just calling out like, oh, Bryce is up there on the slide next to so-and-so. and Or oh, Bryce was underneath that purple weird looking thing. Just kind of like calling out where the kids are so we're aware every yeah. few minutes. Yeah, like you, she could see half the playground a little bit better than I could. And you know what I was like, where's Bryce? And she'd be like, oh, he's over there. Also, you know, Michael was out there, his older brother who's 11. And Michael had a cell phone also. We yeah. were calling Michael and being like, hey, you know, stay near your brother. Oh, and then I was scolding Megan for putting Bryce in a neon green shirt. Because I was like, there's Bryce with a neon green shirt. But there's also another boy with a neon green shirt. There's another boy with a neon green cast. And I was like, look at all these neon greens. And well, I have to accidentally what I do. look because they're all matching. Yeah, it usually doesn't happen like that. Yeah. But yeah, when they do that, I try to watch for all of the same colors. Because I know one of them is um, most likely Bryce and Michael. Um, but yeah, just keeping tabs and like constantly looking. We'll be talking to each other, having a good time, and still paying attention to the kids. Yeah, if I know I'm taking the kids to the park. I try to put them in some bright color or like a bright hat or bright sunglasses something or unique. something so you can pick them out of the mm-hmm. crowd and see them running around. Yes. Uh, there's a little life hack for you if you're looking for your kid on the playground. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'd be more inclined to to see the moms who are keeping an eye on their kids to talk to them to the ones who aren't. Like if you're going to walk with me around the playground so we can keep an eye on together, I'll talk to you. That's fine. But we're going to be going this way. We're going to be going that way. You need to show me what your child looks like too. And I will low key keep an eye out for them as well because I'd be doing that. Um, And I'm fine with that. Yeah. But okay. So here's another scenario for you. Oh no. You're sitting, you're walking up to the playground. Okay. And it's, you know, there's a bunch of moms there and there's an empty seat by itself. Or you, you have the mentality of, you know, like, let's go make friends. Are you going to go sit on the same bench as that mom? Are you going to sit by yourself and wait for her to say something to you? I know what you're going to (laughs) do. Cause I mean, like, how are you supposed to make small? (laughs) (laughs) How are you supposed to make small talk with people if you're not going and like sitting next to them or like within earshot of them? 
I would maybe start off small and sit next to her and say something like, oh, your top is cute or something like that and see how she responds. If I don't get a response that seems open-ended, I'm going a, I'm to a walk I'm a away. Move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she needs to make the, the second move because um, I am, like, very shy in person. Um, I have no no trouble explaining that to people. I think you are more social in social settings and, like, so is Mike. And I'm very, like, a hermit crab because I'm just so scared of rejection or just being Me like, too. oh, never mind. Me too. I'll I'll start with something small and kind of like test the waters, um, but I, I got to be in the mood for it. Like there's sometimes like when we were in New York, where I was just like, I don't know what to do. I, I try to compliment people. I think like compliments are the best way to try to talk to people. But I That's feel like when go-to. they just say thanks, if they don't like, I know this sounds dumb, but like people who just say thanks, I like get the like don't talk to me suggestions. Yeah, like maybe they don't want to be talked, but if like. Thanks. I got this from so and so. I'm like, maybe they do. Yeah, they like talk. keep the conversation. Yeah, going like they're themselves. telling me where and I can like go off of it. But then again, that's how you and I met. Like we started yeah. small talk and like you added more things and then I had more things. Mm-hmm. And I was like, we're moving forward. That's exactly what I do too. Like if I'm at a bar or something or, you know, in line at the store, like, you know. But I'm going to be honest and be forewarning. Like we didn't be friends and un- we didn't become friends until you reached out. Every friend that I've ever sure. had. I never reached out first. Corinne was the first one who reached out. Really? <laughs> yeah, now that I think about it, everyone reached out first because I'm I'm pretty shy. So I can't think of any friendship that I started. So you're myself. never going to meet a mom at the park unless it's me being like, hey, girl. I like yeah. The top. You know, maybe if they're like, hey, like, you're. Or like that old man who was trying to be your friend. Hey, girl, how old is he? And you're like, four. Bye. <laughs> well, Bryce also was like, that's when Bryce was like, you need to say I love you three times when I go through this part of the slide and then one part <laughs> when I go through this part of the slide. So I, I had I had work to do. Honestly, like he's a very um needy kid. So, but um, yeah, I'd be I'd be willing to just understand that I'm a little bit shy. I'm a little shy. I'm a little shy. Um, so but I'm not mean about it. Tiffany, and you want to be friends with her? This is your sign to reach out to her first and be in charge of keeping the conversation going because one person. Yes, I'm gonna need you to be the alpha. <laughs> I'm gonna just need you to tell me one like fun fact. Be like, hey, <laughs> tell me, or ask <laughs> me like, where do you get your whatever, whatever, and then I'll start talking because I love talking about things that I have. You know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the park. And we're going to go up to random women and just say, like, one, like, hi, I'm Megan. One fun fact about me is. <laughs> Girl, I'd cry. I'd be so nervous. Give, me, be... give me two white claws and I'll do it. <sighs> oh, no. that That's going to be our summer goal. We're going to start going to the park more and just meeting. Girl, women. I can't. Maybe. No, we're not. Because we literally built our entire social platform. Because we don't have friends. Because we don't have friends. And that was the original plan was to, like, meet other moms. Girl, we've been doing this for a year. We've met, like, three moms. And we still haven't made any good friends. We're gonna we're gonna do this. It's gonna happen. We're I just wanna gonna do go it. to parks, like random parks, and just like meet one. We person. could literally invite people out to these parks that follow us who want to meet us. They already want to meet us. Girl, one at a time, okay? What the whole going, I think just going to the park is gonna be step one. <laughs> going to the park. No, it's gonna be I know intimidating for the poor one woman who's gonna be there by herself and we're Getting just eyeing her. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be us looking like She's like, that why, one, are, these, why are these two women staring at me? <laughs> why are they making a beeline towards me with their Starbucks? Especially with Megan just pushing me forward. I'm like, hold on, give me some time. I need some time. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally going to be as a poor woman. If that's you and you're, you know, you find out we got a podcast, I'm so sorry in advance. Yeah, just uh, pull out a white claw and say, hi. <laughs> Do you like to drink at the park while watching your kids? Man, did you just make some friends? Oh, my God. We're going to have to. Yeah, we are those moms, too. All right, which brings us to our last point of this. It's helicopter moms. Are you a helicopter mom? I'll tell you what. I am a supersized military ho- helicopter mom. Same Z's. Yeah. Um, I grew up with a very overbearing protective mom who I was never allowed to really do anything growing up, which is why, I'm, you know, one of these a days. rebel. <laughs> yeah, when we talk about, you know, our stories of our youth, uh, mm-hmm. you'll hear about me sneaking out. A lot. Smoking pot in the woods. Um, I love that for you. But uh, so I grew up with kind of an overbearing mom, very controlling. And, you know, I I keep saying that I don't want to be like that with my kids because I really did, you know, hate my mom because of it. And that's part of the reason why I kind of ran away at 18 and got married. But at the same time, she instilled all this like paranoia. Mm-hmm. And the paranoia was only confirmed, you know, but you have to watch the news once. Yeah. And it, you know, con- confirms all of the paranoia that you're feeling to be real. Uh, but at the same time, 
it's not just about, you know, someone's going to kidnap your kids. It's also making sure I'm very big on my kids being respectful Mm -hmm. out in public. Um, So I definitely am not going to let my kids run around, kick dirt on people, you know, run up the slide, just let kids be kids out Mm -hmm. on the playground or whatever. I put quotation marks for those listening to the podcast and not watching us on YouTube. Kids be kids out (laughs) on the playground. (laughs) Like my kids are going to be respectful. You know what I mean? As they should be. I'm glad that you brought up your childhood because I was about to bring this up when you brought up um, about being a helicopter mom. I grew up thinking that I had a really strict mom um, because that that was what my mentality is. And I think after talking to you and and talking to a lot of other people, I didn't have a strict mom. I had a mom who basically was like, I expect, you know, this and this out of you. But with all the responsibility that she expected from us, we really did get to have, you know, the – the childhood we wanted. I got to go hang out with friends. I got to go to the mall, to the movies. I dated, you know, as a teenager Mm -hmm. without being told, you know, no, you can't date or anything like that. Um, I made questionable choices that she told me that she wasn't a fan (laughs) of, you know, she did not like some of the boys that I was dating (laughs) and told me she didn't like them, but she didn't tell me that I couldn't date them. She was like, it's up to you to figure out that like, this isn't good for you. Um, I'm not going to tell you it. I'm not going to tell you you can't hang out with them. She was like, I don't like them. I think that's smart because, I mean, as you can see in the two separate cases, like if my mom, my mom did tell me, you know, don't do this and don't talk mm-hmm. to them. And guess what I did when I was in school? That's all I was doing. Mm-hmm. Skipping school, um, sneaking out, you know, I, I was going to do it anyway, except, yeah. you know, your mom knew about it and my yeah. mom didn't. Uh, but yes, helicopter mom, for sure, especially on places like the playground where we're out in public, like Tiffany and I, we keep the kids next to us. They're probably both holding our hands, even with our son being 11 years old. I don't care. Um, yes. He has a tendency of dragging his feet. It keeps them up with us. So people aren't, you know, their kids aren't, you know what else I hate too? I know I'm like going on a thing right now and I'm sorry. When we're all, people are like walking in public areas and their kids are just like, when we were at Disney on Ice, do you remember? kids were just like running all around and like oh yeah because then we had to like go I around know. these kids like our kids were like either right they were like right in front of us it was our yeah. husbands the kids were in the middle and then it was me and tiffany in the back bringing up the rear like keeping the kids in line yeah people's kids were like zigzagging all through us like people were yelling at their kids to come back people's kids were like dragging behind them and i'm like i i don't understand yeah like i they just they and, and I know a lot of kids, a lot of parents don't want to like yell at their kids in public and stuff like that. But like, we're not scolding the kids constantly. We're just be like, hey, remember you need to be acting like a certain mm-hmm. way. You're kind of straying away from that. Like, get it together. Um, and I just feel like a lot of parents don't do that. They'll act like the whole like kids are being kids. But it's like, yeah, but yeah. you know something goes wrong or something happens that they get hurt or they sway away. Like you're gonna be upset. Like. It takes a few seconds to tell your kids, like, one, we're in a public place. This isn't home where they get to be free and do whatever they want. They mm-hmm. have to act a certain way. If they want to go run around like a hot mess, do that in your own home where you know it's not going to bother anyone else. They're not going to be in danger. Yes, exactly. Um, like, there's a time and place for kids to be kids. Like, right now, like, when I tell Michael all the time, like, when we're walking, this is not <laughs> the time to be running around, bouncing, playing things. Like, you are just walking from point A to B. That is all you should be doing is walking. Yeah, the the whole thing being, like you said, not inconveniencing other people, especially when you're out in public. Like, like other families paid to be here. Same thing with, like, at restaurants. Like, the people who just let their kids, like, scream and, like, throw stuff and, like, be all over the place. And it's like, girl, that one time I told you when we went to that place by the water and the kid was licking the floor. <laughs> girl, like, what the hell? And the parents are just staring at him like, oh, that's so cute. And my, I was like, first of all, the fact that people walking into the restaurant has to w- have to walk over your child because he's yes. in the middle of the walkway and he's licking the floor. Like, do you have no common, like, common courtesy or anything like that? Yeah, those people are paying to be there too and had to have a good experience and they have to literally walk over your child that you're letting lick the floor in a restaurant? Like, I, I turned around look at Michael and I was like, you will never do that. <laughs> I know. Like, I just, I don't understand. And it's not like we're super, like, military strict. Like, oh, you kids need to walk in a single file. Like, just be aware of your surroundings. Be respectful. Don't, you know, make anybody else's experience less than, you know, less than because you're acting a fool. Yep. Like, be respectful. These people will want to be here and have a good time, too. You know, they don't want to hear you screaming and rolling all over the place. I don't want to hear other people's kids screaming and rolling all over the place. Like... So we're helicopter moms in the sense that we make sure our kids are behaving. We're making sure our kids are safe. Like, again, they're not running up the slide at the playground, which I cannot stand that either. Like, yes, especially when there's like a big old line. Like my kids, 100 percent. And 
especially Bryce, which I, I makes me so sad. He will wait in line for the slide, you know, because he's a he's a good boy, and he'll he'll get in line for the slide. He's a good boy. He'll come up on the little thing. He'll be in line, and then kids will like cut in front of him, mm-hmm. and he'll just wait at the end of the line. And they're cutting in front. He's waiting his turn. You got kids coming up the slide yeah. and going down. Kids that'll run like like directly in front. He'll just he'll wait. He's just so patient, and he'll wait for like twenty minutes, and then you know I go over there, yeah. and I will. I'm that mom too. Are you that mom that goes up and makes sure that your kid isn't just waiting in line for 20 minutes to go down the slide? Uh, yes, I will say something to every one of those kids. Let me talk. So this one time, there was this kid. And it was when I took the kids to the park. I think I told you about it. It was over by your house. I took the kids. Mm-hmm. And there was a little boy. And I oh, no, I remember the story. Should I, is it a story I can tell? I don't know that we're gonna have to discuss that afterward because actually I have a point on that that I think could be a whole different podcast because someone brought that up in one of our videos and I was like this is actually a great learning thing because that's something that I've discussed with Michael Mm -hmm. so maybe we'll discuss it on a different podcast okay well then never mind because that's Um, that's a great example of something that it's it's it's, it comes along with the discussion of telling Michael's like there's a time and place where you know you have to maybe act not like an adult, but like kind of like think about like specific scenarios of that mm-hmm. situation. Um, I know we're being super vague. We'll, we'll have to I talk know. about we'll it. We'll have to talk about it and figure out how to phrase it so we don't offend anybody. But but really quick, going back to talking to Michael, I was telling Michael when we were at Disney on Ice, I was like, there's a time and place where like if you're sitting, seeing us just walking like really calmly, I was like, you kind of have to follow our vibe. We're just mm-hmm. if we're calm and collective, you need to be calm and collective as well. If we're sitting down, we're like, okay, Michael, you can like roam off and free. That's the time for you to be. But I was like, you also have to like play these different roles of like, if we're just standing in an elevator, you are just standing quietly, just like everyone else is. You're not screaming, yelling, throwing your toy left around, mm-hmm. hitting stuff. Like kind of just like read the room a little bit. I was like, and be example to Bryce because Bryce is going to copy you. And yeah. if you're like a hot mess all over the place, so is he going to be. Yeah. And then usually when we just have Bryce, he usually copies us anyway. Yeah, so Bryce definitely, quiet. he's definitely the kid that gets the vibe. Um. But also in the same sense, when it's time to go, you know, you got you can't be moseying along. Like you got yeah. a little pep in your stuff. Like when we were trying to leave, we left a couple minutes early, um, so we weren't getting caught. And then Michael's just like, "Let me do this way," and I'm like, "Let's go!" Yes. <laughs> um. But also in regards to helicopter mom, I any situation that could be potentially for dangerous to Michael, I have definitely been like, "You might die if you do it." <laughs> <laughs> I struggle with the fact that Bryce is a Bryce Michael well both of them are boys they are Um, they are (laughs) when like Michael is doing like boy stuff with Mike and stuff like climbing trees or whatever I'm like I can't be watching that I can't be um a part of that or anything like that it gives me so much anxiety oh like when they're jumping off of stuff when they're one climbing the damn tree because I'm like you can can break a leg you can break an arm I don't want to be in the hospital you are the worst I just saw my picture for your contact do you want to talk about who's the worst because I've seen my picture oh yeah no yours is 10 times worse I'm sorry I take that back um like stuff like that where like I know Michael say he's like he's a boy you know this is what boys do boys do you know get dirt on them or break a bone or whatnot he's like you can't be just like hovering and protective all the time and it's like I know but I just know it's dangerous and that like that's the part where I'm super helicoptery because I don't mm-hmm. want him to do the like crazy boy stuff that most boys do because I'm like you're just gonna get hurt or something bad's gonna happen or you know when they were like talking about going camping and I'm like but what if something happens out there yeah. like what are you gonna do like I'm just like freaking out like Mm-mm. just him being like on the kayak by himself I mean yes he had like the little like extra buoy things on it and he was being pulled. And that was the, the, the him being pulled was definitely like more me mm-hmm. where I was like, I don't know. Not the first time. Like the first time. Well, again, like I am a little more paranoid than most people. But the first time I was like, he needs to be pulled going out there. Like there's no way, you know, we're going to let him paddle first. Yeah. His first time, like first real. I mean, he's been on, you know, like in the in the lake in the backyard and stuff, but not like on the ocean. Yeah. Like you need to make sure we're pulling him. Because yeah, I'm the same way sure where like that. I definitely am like that where Travis is like, you need to let them be boys. This is what boys I do. Know. And I'm like, that's what I struggle with. But I have four brothers. Like I was around boys growing up and I'm still like. And also, I just I know boys, you know, 
do the crazy, you know, they always say like boys give moms heart attacks and stuff like that. But it's like, if you don't have to potentially break a bone and be in the hospital, like, Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. I don't want that to be like, oh, it's just a part of life. Like, I, oh, actually, a little off topic on that. I am so terrified that I'm going to be like 30 in a few years and like, knock on wood, I haven't like broken a bone or anything. I've never broken a bone and I'm almost 30 too. Girl, I was scared. I was like, is that normal? I was driving (laughs) in the car the other day and I was like, is that normal? Like, should that happen once in your lifetime? Or like, do people go through their whole entire life without breaking a bone? Yeah, I I haven't broken a bone yet. Ooh, Lord. Off topic. We'll just let us know if that's also you because I was honestly panicking because I was like, does that mean it's coming (laughs) one of these days? (laughs) As soon as you turn 30, if you haven't broken a bone, (laughs) you end up in a full body cast. Um... But yeah, like that one time that Michael got hurt when he when he was at our house and he hit his forehead and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my God, you were never going to run again. And I was like freaking out. Michael was running around chasing my dog. He was like five, maybe four or five. He was little. He um busted his, be- busted his head against one of our tables and just started bleeding all over the place. Um, just as I got in through the like door at work. So I was able to see it. And I was not helpful with Mike or Michael at all. I was screaming a bloody murder. And I was mm-hmm. like, we need a girl to the ER. I think I was panicking more than Michael was. That's um, actually the second time that's happened in his life. I don't know if Mike told you, but when he was first learning to walk, he tripped and hit his head on our coffee table and busted it open. Really? It was during a, Yeah. I don't know if you ever met uh, Mike's friend, Vince and Natalie. But Vince and Natalie were over for a Super Bowl party. And he like he has a scar. That scar on his forehead is mm-hmm. from that. Oh, and so I panicked. Yeah, we didn't take him to the hospital. I mean, we, we were, did. You did? Mm-hmm. We went to the ER. Well, the we ER took forever. Him. Girl, that's another story in itself. I got in a fight with someone at the ER. Um, but um, yeah, I was I was honestly just so scared. And I was like, now we have to be like extra careful. And Michael's just trying to be like, these things happen. Like, it's okay. And I was just like panicking. I was like, what if, you know, he gets hurt every single time for the rest of his life? What <laughs> if it was just me? Like, I was just super super like terrified of everything at that point like for the first few weeks i was like michael don't play just sit on the couch and just don't move yeah that's that's exactly how i am i'm terrified of them doing anything and everything like anything that they could possibly get her like we were talking about um bryce is gonna be five getting him swim lessons Mm -hmm. and i did not teach michael how to swim um i taught myself how to swim when i was like eight years old was no one taught me how to swim same thing Oh, really? No one ever taught me to swim, period. I love that for us. I doggy I still paddle. can't swim. Yeah, I still can't really. So I can doggy paddle and I, like, I can get myself from A to B, but I don't really. I'm not a very strong swimmer. Same. Um, I love that for us. Look at us. I know. It's just so embarrassing. But I want to get Bryce, like, legit swim- swimming lessons. Well, Bryce is so daring. I was telling Megan when we were going out on the water this weekend, Bryce didn't even have his life vest and was already starting to walk towards the water. And I was like, this kid is just ruthless. Like, he just kept going yeah. more and more. And we're like, Bryce, Well, he kept stop. saying, he's like, let me show you how I know how yeah. to swim. And I was like, yeah, I know how to swim. Get out of the water. I know. <laughs> and it's just like, I, I just. But we're going to get him swim lessons. And the only thing I can think of, because I actually had a job at a swim school for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I just stopped showing up. I love that. <laughs> it was when I was like, how old was I? Like, 17 27 (laughs) and i remember like hearing those kids scream like during swim lessons yeah and i'm like oh my god like that's gonna be my kid i mean they learned how i mean the the kids were fine and they all learned how to swim by the end of the program like swim like a fish they could jump in they could do flips you know like all this stuff it's just part of the process and it's mostly them just being scared and i was just like that's gonna be price and i'll just i don't know do you think um do you think for oh he'll be five five is a good age or do you think you should have started him earlier? oh i i wish we would have started him way younger like his cousin is um a couple months older than him and he started to swim at like two and That's- he can he was able to like jump in the pool you know like he can jump in the heat and he's like a really 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 great swimmer now that's what I really want to do. I've always been a scare. Like, you see all these kids drowning in pools and mm-hmm. stuff like that. That I always said, if Mike and I ever have kids, like, you know, they do those toddler things where they throw the babies in and mm-hmm. teach them how to turn around. Like, that's something yeah. that's, like, priority on the list because I just – I could never imagine that. Well, I don't, don't know how to swim. Pool. Yeah, we don't have a pool. We've never had a pool. Uh, so I'm like, when do I have the opportunity? And I don't want to teach them how to swim in the freaking ocean. Yeah. Like, when do I have an opportunity to teach them how to the swim? The YMCA, they do that everywhere. Girl, when do I got time to go to the YMCA? When the baby is small, well, now it's a little bit harder because Bryce is in school. I was working. Out things. Oh, that's true. There has to be some way to. to yeah, I was out. working, and even when I wasn't working at a physical job, like I was nannying all mm-hmm. day long. So I, you know, I'm driving to and from Tampa to pick up Michael every other week. Like I yeah. didn't have time. 
So I mean, it was still hard. now where he's young enough. To... Yeah, I want to do it this summer for sure. Because again, like you said, like there's so many opportunities, and he wants to be in the water. And that's and... the thing; he's so excited to go in the water that I think he, it's like the perfect time where it's like if you do want to go in the water, you need to learn how to go in it correctly mm-hmm. because this kid is just quick to freaking run to the water before we can even yell at him, and we mm-hmm. constantly have to be like, "Get away!" or make sure we're close enough Get your to grab him. On, yeah, because yeah. um, he just. Bryce has no fears besides, like, vegetables, grapes. <laughs> <laughs> grapes make me nervous. So um, I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. and But, yeah, that's just all these things. And he's just the first to, like, look, look, Mommy, I, I lined up on my pillows because he has a loft bed jumping out. <laughs> and his loft bed is shaped like a house. Like, my husband built it. And it, it's so And it's cute. high. It's high. And he'll line up his pillows and be like, I'm going to jump out the window. And I'm like, no. Like, I have a camera in his room to, like, make sure he's not doing, like, evil can evil skits in there. I know. He's just so – he's he the reason care. why we should be helicopter moms because that child is going to – I was telling Megan actually this morning. I was like, I can't wait till he's old enough that I can just be like, <laughs> for all the times when he was younger. Giving us heart attacks. Yes. He is – he is pretty fearless. I mean, there are some – like, except for when Mike put him up on his shoulders. Oh, yeah. Some things he's, like – He'll like, jump he'll off go the bed. A, but yeah, he won't. He won't want to shoulders. be on your shoulder. I think it's just because it's unstable, mm-hmm. maybe. But he'll also go on a roller coaster, which our eleven-year-old won't. Yeah, our eleven-year-old is like, and again, it, I kind of low-key blame myself because I mean, I, I think it's, now that I'm, he's getting older, I can kind of tell it's just part of his personality because a lot of things go into it. But I was very like, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. It's scary. Don't do that, don't do that. And oh, hundred percent, because he's he's even said it before. He's like, it's scary. I'm like, but you've never been on it. He's like, but it looks scary. I'm I know. Like, uh-uh, that's not that's not an excuse. I'm like, if you get on it, and it's scary. That's that's a reasoning. But that's the whole thing too. Like I say, I blame myself, and like I Loki kind of do. But at the same time, like I've never been afraid of rides. Like even as a kid, my first roller coaster was Rock and Roller Coaster at Disney World, where it went upside down twice, a corkscrew, and was pitch black in the dark, zero to sixty. And that was my first roller coaster as a kid, younger than him, like when it first opened. I've never been but, afraid of rides, so I'm like, why are you afraid of rides? Look at your dad, though. I feel like if you would have been like, but I'm scared of it, your dad would have been like, I don't give a damn. That's my dad, though. And he yeah, exactly. And I feel like if Michael, Michael, when he was literally, he's like, I'm scared. I want you. are going to be like, you don't have to. <laughs> no, I mean, we forced him. Oh, girl. We went to. Girl, the go-karts. The go-karts, yeah. When he was crying and Bryce was there eager, like, ready to get on the cool car. Michael yep. was bawling his eyes out. We're like, you need to go on it. And if you don't, like, like it afterwards, then that's fine. And he loved it. He wanted to go mm-hmm. on it a second time. Yeah. When we we took him to uh, Legoland, we took both boys to Legoland a few years ago, and they have a ride there. If you guys are familiar with Universal Studios, they have a ride called Doctor Doom, and you basically get lifted up and you get dropped down. Okay. Well, at Legoland, they have like a baby version of that. It's not very high. They do drop you down, but you're not – first of all, it's not that it's high. It's like a little adrenaline it's rush. It's like a little adrenaline rush. And we convinced – well, we didn't convince. Like, we told Michael he needed to go on it because all these kids were younger than him. Like, they were Bryce's age. Bryce now. Bryce was a baby back then. He couldn't go on it. But they were about Bryce's age now, like, four, five, six years old going on this ride. And Michael was, like, eight, nine. And I'm like, go on that. You know, we need to, you know, get you ready. Let's go. And, girl, he – and Travis rode it with him. Girl, he screamed so much they had to stop the ride and get him off. Yeah. I can't with him. I know. And I was just like, Travis said he was, and of course, like Travis, me, I wouldn't care. Like, I'm like, okay, whatever. My husband gets so embarrassed. Like, poor Travis. He's like, I'm never going that again. But Bryce, I feel like Bryce would be over it. Because remember when we took Bryce, we, t- we took Bryce to the, the Florida State Festival. Or oh, he Florida had a State blast. Fest. We took him on that ride. I don't know if you guys have been on it, but. I don't know what it's called. I think it's like a whirl or something. It's the one. If you guys remember, you get on it and you like sit with one other person and the music is super loud and it goes super fast. You like and you go end up, up down in a wave and you yes. go in a circle. You end up like basically sitting on top of each other because it's going so fast and it yeah. usually comes with music. So it's a great time. I can't remember the and name of the ride. And then it stops. And then, it goes and then backwards. you go backwards and it's like a wave up and down, but you're going like in a circle. Bryce was like. Which I saw when you used the YouTube video, you didn't film the, or you didn't, did we not film the backwards part? We did. But um, does Bryce look terrified? I want to see that footage. If girl, he looked terrified the whole entire time. He said he loved it though, and he would go on it again. He said he, he was like, like holding off for dear life, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> but he said he liked it, and he also went on the really tall slide. Yeah. Like, no, he's so weird. About we things. went on um, 
what was it? Where were we? Was it Bush? No, it wasn't Bush Gardens. We didn't do Bush Gardens together. Maybe maybe it was Zoo Tampa. We went on that mini roller coaster mm-hmm. with Bryce, and Michael was like not wanting to go, but Bryce was like living his best life. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was like, Michael, it's really not that serious. Like you, if you make yourself get, he hypes himself. Yeah, up. yeah. You hype yourself up and you scare yourself, and then you get on and you're like, it's not that bad. When you should just start off with not that bad, and then if you get off and you're like, actually, it was worse than I thought. I don't want to get on it. Mm-hmm. That's fine, but. The times that he's told me, he's like, I don't want to get on that ride. It looks scary. And I'm like, have you been on it? No. Then you don't know. <laughs> and tell me how you can climb a tall ass tree and give me anxiety. With no harness, no nothing. And he can like jump out of and it. He and he jumps off fine. of it. Sometimes he'll fall and he'll be like, that only hurt a little bit. <laughs> I only when I know. My fingers. And exactly. I know the look of his face. It hurt a lot more, but he doesn't want to say anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can't get on a ride that I know is a lot more secure. Or it's not that, you know, something that Bryce can get on and you're just like, it looks That's scary. what I've always told him, too, because he says he doesn't like roller coasters. And that's whatever. Like, I I know grown adults who have never been on a roller coaster and never will go on a roller coaster. And that's fine. If that's his prerogative in life, that's great. But I told him, I was like, listen, if they're going to let. And this goes with any ride. He's not just afraid of roller coasters. He's afraid of a lot of different kinds of rides. And I told him, you know, if a baby can get on, if your four-year-old brother, it's not scary. They're not going to let a baby go yeah. on anything that goes upside down, anything that goes super fast. any If it's got a harness on it like this and a lap bar, you're not going to fall out. Yeah, like, if you go on a roller coaster that only has a lap bar, it's not going to go upside down. Because if you're going to go upside down, you need a harness. Mm-hmm. So if you see us going on a roller coaster that's, you know, going five miles down and it's got a, a cartoon tiger on it. Chances are it's not going to go upside down. It's not going to go that fast. If it's only on a lap bar and your yeah. brother can ride it. If, yeah. If Bryce is getting on the ride, it's not that serious. Like with the go-karts thing, mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know what. You've been in a car that goes a lot faster than I tell a him that go-kart. all the time. I'm like, we're going 90 miles an hour right now. I know. It's, it was just a go-kart. <laughs> Nothing. Like it wasn't bumper cars. You were not allowed to hit each other. Um, Literally just go-karts. And he was just terrified of it. And I was like, I, I don't I don't. Get in it. the beginning. I mean, he, he ended up being fine. And he wanted to go on it again. Yeah, he loved but... it. So... I don't know. Even with ice skating. Mm-hmm. That's another one. He was scared of it when he's, you know, when we first started. And I was like, I love ice skating. Like, this is something that we're going to do all the time. And now he's like, can we go ice skating? I know. He lived his best life. Bryce, on the other hand, <laughs> Bryce was the one who was not about ice skating. I've never been ice skating, so I didn't go. I hung out with uh, Tiffany's mom and my mother-in-law. First of all, I don't know what was worse. Bryce screaming his head off because he was terrified or Travis in the back not being able to hold himself together to even help Bryce. Bryce or Travis also was his first time ice skating and I think he over he made it seem I would be honest he made it he thought it was a lot easier than it actually is. Travis brought up ice skating he's like we should all do it and I was like oh my god I love ice skating I ice skate all the time do you want to go and he's like yeah and then I was like Megan do you want to go she was like no so I said I was I would go but it was really 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 packed and I was like, I don't want my first experience to be like running into someone. Running into someone. So Travis and I went. We took the boys so that you know he would hold Bryce and I would hold Michael because I've been I've held Michael before when we've gone ice skating and I've helped teach Michael how to ice skate. Um, helped Michael go once or twice around. He ended up getting the the swing of things, so he was by himself. And literally for like twenty minutes, we couldn't find Travis or yeah. Bryce. And she went around like several times. I did. I was like, I don't know where he is. And honestly. I didn't expect that the man who was struggling to stand up was Megan's husband. So that's why I was like, where is him? Like, I know he has his shit together, and he did not. Um, And Bryce was already bawling his eyes out. So I ended up having to carry Bryce out myself and Mm -hmm. then come back to help poor Travis, who was still holding on to the side. Yep. Bryce, I don't think Bryce just likes, now that I'm thinking about it, you know, with him crying, being on Mike's shoulder and crying, I don't think he likes not being stable. Like, he needs to be like... I think if, Solid. if I would have taken him ice skating, he wouldn't have been as scared. I think he was scared of the fact that because Travis, like, you could see it in his face that he was yeah. struggling to stand up. That scared, like, the crap out of Bryce. Yeah, if he had, if he had like, a solid support system or something. Or I wish they had, like, those. I think if they had, like, the. They do in Brandon. The, the Brandon the ones. Carts. It's, like, a little wheelchair looking thing. Not a wheelchair. Uh, uh, a walking. Wheel, a walker. A, a walker. walker. Yeah, a walker yeah. with little tennis balls on the bottom. And he was able to hold on to something sturdy. He would have a much better time. Yeah. And just teach him the way I taught Michael. I was like, you, you know, you do one, two, stop. One, two, stop. You have to, like, calm down because when you start going too fast, you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Girl, and that, I'm going to need one of those things, those walkers. We, we're going to record it. We're going to all go ice skating. Yeah, you think I'm days. joking. I'm, I'm, I legit cannot balance. Like, we did a TikTok where it was like, who's most likely to fall on their face in public? Everyone pointed to me like it's not a joke. I just am not a very, like, balanced woman. I think you'll be able to do it. I think it'll be, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think it'll be a great new little hobby for the boy i mean mike already learned but for bryce to learn um and it's a workout is it yeah when you're not busting your butt on the floor it is a workout 
Well, yeah, like inline skating, and mm-hmm. which I also don't know how to do. I know. I was about to say that. <laughs> you don't no know how to ice skate. Me. You don't know how to inline skate. You don't know how to ride a bike. We no are going to be teaching me. Megan all three we this summer. Yes. Megan learns. Yes. Like, <laughs> no. I can teach you how to change a tire. We oh can teach God. those three things. Um, what else do you not know how to do? Swim properly. <laughs> I can't teach you that. You on your own. We both going to be <laughs> <laughs> doggy paddle. I got a doggy paddle down pat. Yeah. So we, or we could do surfing like we could um, we could integrate it into season two and megan and tiffany learn oh now tiffany has to learn i don't know about <laughs> don't that know we might surf. have to discuss that off of here off of here <laughs> um i think i'm already learned out <laughs> <laughs> but anyway all right guys well we got to cut this because we got to go pick up the kids yes. but thank you for hanging out with us this is kind of all over the place this podcast but you know what Sometimes it'd be like that. It does. Sometimes it'd be like that. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned. We are going to be doing a surprise giveaway on the podcast. Oh, yes. We thought that'd be a really great thank you for listening in and supporting us on our podcast. So we're going to do it where the only way you can enter is by listening in and you can win us some free money. Free money. So we will be announcing that tomorrow or no. It will be next, next podcast. It'll be our next podcast. <laughs> it's not going to be announced anywhere else on any of our social media platforms. It is strictly only for the people who listen to our podcast. We will be giving the details here next week. Yes. So get excited. Um, it's going to be literally exclusively for only those who listen. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we're going to be doing. That's pretty much it. I know. I can't think of much. Thank you guys so much for listening in. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Moms of Tampa on Instagram. Moms of Tampa official on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye.